Hello and welcome back to Sharks Happen. Uh, on today's show, I guess you'll have to imagine we're in a boat and we're fishing. We got other people in the boat with us in most of these stories. And a shark joins us in the boat. So you're attacked while you're in the, while you're in the boat. It's what I call a dry attack. Uh, these ones are all going to be in a boat. We're going to go over one where the person is pulled off the boat into the water. The rest of these all take place in the boat and they're all like single attacks but because they're in boats we're just going to cover all four or five of them together and i hope you stay with us this is going to be a great show Okay, now we're going to start out the show. We're going to head over to Melbourne, Australia. And the date on this is December of 1949. Doug Miller, he is out doing some fishing. He's on a 16-foot dinghy uh, with two other occupants, uh, a couple, a husband and wife. And he is seasick, and I've been seasick before, and you are on the floor. And the best thing you can, I can do when I'm seasick is fall asleep. You're okay if you're sleeping. If you can't get there, though, you're in trouble, which means you're usually laying down when you get seasick. Um, if you're not getting sick over the side of the boat, you're laying down as low as you can get and just trying to become unconscious, basically. So it sounds like that's what Doug was doing. And in this story, I do believe that Edna is the name of the wife. I think she had seen the shark on the way up into the boat. They were out fishing. And he's in the bottom of the boat. She says she was feeling a little seasick. And all of a sudden she turned and there's an eight and a half foot sand tiger shark that leapt out of the water and landed on Doug in the back. Now Doug says he's laying on the floor and all of a sudden he heard a scream. So he must have heard Edna scream when she saw it jump out of the water. And... Uh, then he felt the shark land on his back. He was able to get his feet, so he was probably down by the tail where the shark was laying on him, and he got to his feet right away, and he says that tail knocked him down three times, and he finally was able to get up after they stunned the shark and get away from it. It took 10 minutes of uh, Mr. Uh, of Edna's husband beating on the shark with the tiller, what's left of the tiller that was busted when the shark broke over the side of the boat and Edna, he was hanging on to Edna with one arm and beating on the shark with the other arm and finally Doug Miller was able to get up and he ends up with no, no uh, injuries. He ended up, you know, hit by the shark. Edna had said that she was feeling seasick at the time but the shark, when she looked over and saw that shark laying on top of Doug, it cured her seasickness. I can imagine your mind is too busy to worry about being sick. Um, so they get in, the, the shark ends up dying of course and uh, that's how they know the length of it being eight foot six inches so almost a nine foot shark uh, uh, sand tiger shark those little pokey teeth um, in all aquariums that thing uh, can pit you know all these sharks can pick up enough speed to leap out of the water um, and sometimes they land on moving boats you'll you'll be watching these videos on YouTube and you'll see that a mako has jumped and the one I saw, it was wrapped up in the bow rail of the Mako up, up near the front. And, you know, how are you going to get that thing out of there? You might be able to take a gaff and push it to try to help it back out. But the thing's thrashing so crazy. Um, I don't know what they do to deal with that. I didn't watch the full clip to see if they said what they did to get the thing off the boat. But that's the story of Doug Miller um, had himself uh, one heck of a day out there fishing, seasick, and then has a shark land on him, and then knock him down three other times, and we will move on. Okay, now we're gonna head over to the Diep River, which is over in South Africa, and the date on this is August 19th of 1977. Alec Mamekos is out doing some fishing. It sounds like in the mouth of the Diep River, and he's with three other occupants on a, what they call a surf ski, so I'm thinking 16 foot boat, somewhere around dinghy size. And the four of them are out there fishing. At about 1.30, one of the gentlemen on the boat hears a thud, turns around, and Alec Mamekos is underneath a 13 foot shark. Uh, I believe this was a great white shark that jumped into his boat and landed on him. 
It took all three of the other occupants to get the shark off of Alec. And they got it off, but the shark was biting up the inside of the boat as they were taking it in. They weren't taking it in. Um, I believe Alec and the occupants of the boat were taken in so that Alec could get help because he had hurt his back. This is uh, a, you know, 13 foot great white shark is a heavy shark to land on you. And it makes me wonder whether he was knocked off his feet, which is what it sounds like. The shark came out and knocked him down and landed on top of him. And by the time they get him off of there, it's, uh, I believe he had pelvic injuries too. So he has back injuries for sure. And I think he had some pelvic injuries from the weight, uh, crushing uh, injuries. So he had to go in for help and another boat towed in the boat because they couldn't get the shark off the boat. This is too heavy of a shark and it's all the way inside of the boat and it's biting up the inside like um, you have foam a lot of times, uh, the foam seat going around there that'll be on, a, on the edge kind of like a back pad. It sounds like that's what this thing was chewing up and when they were hoisting the shark up out of the boat, it was still biting the boat and it lifted the side of the boat out of the water a little bit before it let go. So the shark was not happy with that boat that it landed in. And Alec Mamekos has to go in and get himself some help. Um, I do believe it was a great white shark, but in the clip that I'm going to put in, it doesn't mention what type of shark, but the weight uh, makes it seem like it's probably for sure a great white shark. So just a crazy attack. I could not imagine standing there doing fishing and being knocked down by a great white shark. By any shark that's 13 feet long. I mean, nine feet is one thing in the last story, but this is a 13 footer with some big girth on it that lands on top of you and causes crushing injuries. Not a, not a good fishing day. Um, I'll take my uh, escapades over that and we will move on. Okay, now we're gonna head over to Tasmania, Australia. And the date on this is July of 2020. Lucas Arnett is 10 years old and he is out doing some fishing with his father at Tasmania. They are five kilometers from shore. It's about 1.30 in the afternoon. Reports will come out later that the father was cleaning fish, throwing the carcasses over the side. Um, Lucas is standing near the side of the boat, obviously, at, at 1.30 in the afternoon and his father is standing there maybe cleaning fish, doing whatever he's doing. Out of his peripheral vision, he sees a great white shark pop up out of the water, over the side of his boat, grab his son and pull him into the water. Without a thought, the father goes into the water. Lucas is there, the shark is still there. The shark does not still have Lucas. And I believe the father had slapped, hit the shark and the shark went on its way, but both were in the water when the father went in. So this was, sees the shark, sees the boy leave the boat and he jumps in after them. He probably landed on the shark with the way that he went in. And the shark leaves and he gets his boy on board and he gets him in to help. Um, he must have been wearing some good, you know, uh, foamy life jacket because he had barely cuts from this shark grabbing him and pulling him overboard. And a lot of times sharks, when they grab things, they're just going to go gum deep at the most. So once they're, I think once their gums feel whatever they're biting, they stop. That's where you get that somebody grabbed my leg with that test bite thing. I think that it, it actually grabbed him off the boat with the force of a test bite. Otherwise he would have had, uh, you know, pretty bad injuries from a shark grabbing you and pulling you off the boat. Don't remember the size of the shark, um, but it's probably a decent size shark to, to leap up there. And then, you know, like I said, uh, it came out afterwards, people were talking about the fishing that they were doing. And some were saying, hey, he's out there cleaning these fish and throwing the carcasses overboard, which is never a good idea. You don't want to attract sharks to your boat. Um, most people do that when they get in, and that's why you should never f swim in a marina or a harbor or places that these fishing boats go. They're going to be cleaning their fish, and they're going to be chucking everything in the water. There's going to be all kinds of different sharks there, not just your uh, nurse sharks that are usually around there. You're going to have nurses. You're going to have, you know, the gray nurses that have the teeth. You're going to have bull sharks. You're going to have uh, sandbar sharks. Any kind of sharks are going to be there for a free meal because these places always do that. So never swim in a marina uh, in 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 uh, salt water and and never have like jewelry on but he was chucking these carcasses overboard and they were saying that this you know probably why that shark came up 
And uh, it could be. I mean, I, I don't think for a shark. What I do wonder is did that shark spy hop before it did that? <laughs> Was it over there looking at little Lucas somewhere at a distance from the boat and planning this thing out? That's what I wonder. Um, I'm not going to go as far as saying that the reason that, that happened, they were chucking stuff in the water. That could just be coincidence. Could be what you know brought the shark's attention too. Um, but I don't think that would cause it to go up and grab a kid off of a boat. Um, but I do believe the grandfather went ahead and uh, eventually confirmed the story that he was cleaning fish and throwing the carcasses over there. But still, Lucas was on a boat dry and he was grabbed and then he was wet. And then the dad was wet. Luckily, no injury, uh, no major injury at all. And we'll get on to the last attack of this episode. Okay, before we get to our final attack, of these dry attacks, I'm going to go over a couple that uh, I've been looking for them in the databases, and I I have yet to find them again. Uh, most likely came from books. Some of these attacks I've seen that people are taking them out of books, and these two sound like they're crazy enough to be from a book. And one of them was uh, actually in newspapers. They had a newspaper clipping of it, and I. Uh, don't know the gentleman's name. Two gentlemen had taken a shark that they had caught. I believe it was a 10-foot shark that they had caught. And they wanted to take it to have it stuffed. And while they were putting it into their vehicle, so this is early 1900s. Cars are only out for a decade or so. They're putting the shark in this vehicle, and the shark bit the guy. So it wasn't dead yet. He ends up bit, I believe it was in a leg, and he had to go and get... Um, himself helped out so they thought the shark was dead probably did what they sh should do to make sure it's dead and it still wasn't dead so that's the first honorable mention the second we'll talk about Leslie Nye and this was mid 1900s maybe and this was over in the UK kind of um, Cornwall I believe it was he was off of Cornwall and they had had a 20-foot shark that was terrorizing the place. I think it, they had attacks too, um, although I can't find any. But they had a 20-foot shark there, and they couldn't get it out of the area. So Leslie Nye decides it's a good thing he's going to go out and he's going to lasso the shark. And on the lasso, there's going to be dynamite. So this guy takes dynamite out on the boat, and he goes ahead and makes the lasso. Uh, must have lit the dynamite before he lassoed the shark, I would think. But he was able to lasso the shark, dynamite's on top of the shark, shark swims a little bit away, swims back under the boat, and the dynamite goes off, killing the shark, Leslie Nye, and his boat. So that's the second, um, I guess we'll call it an honorable, uh, honorable mention for these dry shark attacks. The third is my favorite. And I wish I could find this in newspapers, so I'm on a hunt. And if I ever find this, I'll update it in a show. Um, some guy some guy in some city, he was out fishing, and he brings this shark he caught back um, with him. And thinks the thing's dead. Um, probably was out of the water for a while, and who knows what they did with it to make sure that it was dead. But again, it's reported that he took it into his hut that night, you know, like a open room hut type thing that him and his wife live in and this is back during candlelights he takes the shark in and he hangs it up in his house inside of his hut that sounds like and sure enough that shark is not dead it start, wriggles its way around so much that it snaps whatever he had holding it up so now the shark's on the ground they're trying to keep the shark from getting them and they need to get out of the house and the shark's thrashing knocks both of the candles down and now they're in dead black inside of a hut thing with the shark thrashing around and who knows where the door is. Um, there's windows but it's night and it sounds like there's no uh, sunlight to help them be able to see and finally they're able to get up and out of the, out of the hut but I do believe his wife's leg was severed before he got her out of there. And that's why I gotta find that one. So that's the third of the dry attack honorable mentions. And like I said, I've seen the, the clipping of the one in the automobile. I have not seen the one of the attack on this gentleman inside of a hut. And of course, this is in, if I remember correctly, it's in like a, you know, a remote place. 
to where this story could have built before it ever got out to anybody, which is what I think some of these things do in some remote areas. And you get some crazy stories like uh, um, possibly could have happened with a gentleman that was attacked by sharks and then attacked by lions on the way to the, you know, you never know. So that's those two attacks. And now we go to May of 1995. Where was this, guys? Fiji. We're going over to Fiji. And this is Kinijioji Vindovi. He was 69, was he 69 years old? Yeah, he was 69 years old. And he is out doing some fishing and he's on a dinghy and he's asleep at night. So these guys are, I believe there's others on this dinghy with him and they're sleeping. So they're out fishing, but they're sleeping on the boat. Middle of the night, a 12 foot shark, and they don't identify the shark, leaps into the boat nearly severs his hand, his right hand, and nearly severs his right leg, and that's a fatality. Kinijioji Vindovi went to sleep on a boat, and still on that boat ends up a fatality of a shark attack. Um, that is just the craziest of all the dry attacks, to have a fatality happen, and it almost removes the guy's leg and hand in the process. Uh, no telling of who got the shark off of him, what happened afterwards. They just have the clip that I'm going to put into the into the show here that says that it had happened over uh, over in Fiji. Uh, Twelve foot shark. If it's Fiji, it could be just about anything. Um, you know, who knows? Twelve foot shark though goes ahead and almost bites your leg off, and you're in the middle of the water. You know, it's going to take you a while to get in, and in a dinghy, you're not going to have that powerful of a motor to where you're going to get anywhere very fast. So, not a good situation for Kenny G. OG. And uh, that's the attacks for today. That's the show for today, our single attack episodes of dry attacks. Um, we'll also have some to where people are out fishing and whatever they caught or a shark that they hooked drags them into the water and we'll get into those kind of attacks in a similar style where it's a single attack tech episode but because they're all similar we'll go over a bunch of them together i hope you enjoyed the show i hope you'll be back in a few days for another round of attacks but until then if you go into that water you are much more afraid of those sharks than they are of you <laughs>